Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to talk about all 20 books that I've given five stars to so far in 2023. These are all the books that I ended up giving five stars so far throughout the year. We're about halfway through the year so I thought I'd talk about these five star reads. There just so happens to be 20 of them in total. So I'm very excited to talk about these books. I'll try and go like as fast as possible because there are 20 and I don't want this video to be like an hour long for y'all. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm very excited to talk about these. I've given all these books five stars and I hope y'all love them as much as I do. My favorite book of the year by far is Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. I don't see anything topping this book. I actually read this book as an ARC. So this does come out on July 11th, I'm pretty sure. So mark your calendars because this book is perfection to me. This is a surprise baby romance with amazing disability representation, a relationship that I strive to have. It is beautiful. It is everything I've ever wanted in a book. This is about Wynne and Bo. They end up meeting at a Halloween party one night and have a one night, amazing one night little tryst. And what they don't expect is for there to be a baby afterward. So Wynne ends up moving in with Bo so that they can deal with this pregnancy together. And hopefully when this baby comes, like be amazing co-parents together. And they're trying to figure out the feelings that they have for each other throughout all of this, they're warring in their own mind of, do I want to step over that boundary because I want this co-parenting situation to turn out well. As someone who also has a disability, I found this book to be profoundly beautiful. When in here, it has a limb difference that is own voices for Hannah Bonham Young. Um, and then also Bo is an amputee. He ended up losing a part of his leg due to cancer. I recommend everyone reads this book, but especially those who are in the disabled community because it will only make you feel absolutely hopeful. There are some trigger warnings in here, so just be aware for pregnancy, ableism, depression, past suicidal thoughts, and cancer in the past. So mark your calendars for July 11th. You will not want to miss this one. It is my favorite book of the year and I don't see anything topping it. I just realized the dog is chewing a bone to so, like ignore that. If you can, I'm so sorry if you could hear that. I cannot take the bone out of Candace's mouth. Will not happen. My first read of the entire year was a five-star read and that is Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. This was just so unexpected for me. I did not expect to love this one as much as I did. This is like an enemies to lovers, rivaling businesses romance. Blair and Ronan own rivaling businesses next door to each other. Blair's is a cupcake cocktail bar and Ronan's is a like ax throwing sport bar of sorts. Both of them do not get off on the right foot when they meet each other and thus sparks a prank business war, if you will, between their two businesses, but it quickly shifts when they start falling in love with each other and each other's businesses instead. If you want a romance filled with banter, like you have to read this one. It's also, is definitely a foodie romance. Blair's cupcakes in here literally make Ronan like drool at the mouth every single time she makes one. A plus in this one that I love, um, like for a lot of these books is there was no third act breakup. Some of my favorite romance books of all time does not have the third act breakup in it. Sometimes it's not needed. And a lot of these romance books I love do not have third act breakups in them. So I love Ronan as a character. You get to see his growth and Blair's growth in here as individuals and as a couple and with their businesses. I did not expect to love this one as much as I did, but like I, w I was obsessed with it. Next is like the only book that I've read this year that's a YA, but I had to read it because it's a Talia Hibbert book. This is Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. Look at this cute stinking cover. I have to take that sticker off. That needs to happen. <laughs> I haven't done that yet. Um, but I, oh, I love this one. Talia Hibbert writes some like phenomenal scheme. So like, I didn't think I would love this one as much as I normally do with her books because like I'm obsessed with her scheme, but like her writing, transferred so well to this YA book. This is about Celine and Bradley who used to be best friends but now turned like frenemies in high school and they both want to get this scholarship for college. One of the things you have to do for the scholarship is go to this like campsite and like camp out and do like survival skill things for a few days. For this, they're forced to confront their past like feelings and past friendship and past relationship that they've had with each other and why they are not friends anymore, like what happened. Talia Hibbert does an amazing job of making you believe that the characters that she writes are real people. They just feel so real to me. Like these two characters 
are flawed in a lot of ways, like all of us, but then they shine obviously in other ways that I love. And this book also got like a bonus point for me because uh, one of the side characters in here has celiac disease and I love that. I love that. Um, there's also rep in here for OCD. Bradley in here does have OCD. So there's that representation if uh, you would like to read about it, but I thoroughly enjoyed this YA romance. Like I don't read YA anymore, but I totally sucked in to this book. Next is one I like need like no explanation of. This is Heartless by Elsie Silver. Like what else can I say about this book that everyone else hasn't, you know? So this one is about Kate and Willa. Kate needs a nanny for his, I believe, five-year-old son. There enters Willa, who is the heroine from book one in this series, his best friend, and she comes to help Cade. There is a reason why this book receives high praise. Like it is phenomenally written. The characters are amazing. The romance is off the charts. I just have to say everyone was right and this book is amazing. This book is everything. I love the meet cute moment. I love the relationship Willa had with Cade's son. I used to be a nanny and I just felt like Willa was everything I love in a nanny romance because I could relate to her so much. <laughs> Next I have The Coldest Winter by Brittany Cherry. I am on Brittany Cherry's ARC team so I ended up getting an early copy of this book and I was obsessed with it. This is a forbidden romance because it is like a tutor student relationship kind of. Starlet and Milo are both dealing with grief in different ways. Milo recently lost his mother and Starlet is dealing with the loss of her mother a few years ago, as well as um, this horrible breakup she just experienced. They end up meeting each other at a party one night, at a college party, and have a grand old amazing time together. But they're both shocked when Starlet goes to her first like a student teaching position at a high school and Milo is sitting in one of the desks. So he is a high school student who's been, I believe, held back. So he's like older than everyone else um, and he is a senior and so their romance is definitely forbidden. She is tasked to be his tutor while uh, she is being a student teacher as well and the two of them really connect over their grief and what they've experienced in their life and they just fall head over heels in love with each other like to a point of a like obsession honestly. Brittany Cherry never ceases to amaze me. Her writing like I could get <laughs> like so many of her quotes tattooed on my body like her quotes are that memorable and that phenomenal. And I feel like this book is definitely one that is a love letter to grief and those dealing with grief. Like it really made me feel so much. Trigger warnings in this one, substance abuse, depression, topic of death and grief, obviously. I can't wait to get my physical copy of this one and just like just lay it on my shelves because I think it is also just like a stunning book to look at. I finished this book literally yesterday. This is Juniper Hill by Devney Perry, my first Devney Perry book. Um, I was chatting with Victoria and Zay, we're going to book Bonanza very soon and both of them have read Devney Perry and they want to go to their table, to her table, and I was like okay I want to go to her table too but I've never read anything by her, what should I read? And I'm Immediately both of them were like, Juniper Hill. You're gonna love Juniper Hill. And they were not wrong because there's a baby in this one and they know how bad my baby fever is. Memphis is our heroine in here and she ends up moving to Quincy, this small town with her, I think, six week old baby named Drake. She moved to Quincy in hopes of starting a new life just to start over and experience a small town life with her son. The only place to like live though in Quincy is this apartment over um, this man's garage. His name is Knox and he doesn't seem the most happy that uh, Memphis has decided to come move in above his garage but like it's a favor to his sister so he's like okay fine. Um, but things definitely change between the two of them. They're first like like walking on eggshells around the other person um, but Knox helps very colicky Drake go to sleep for many nights and Memphis is eternally grateful. They just connect over her son and just for so many other reasons. I was so obsessed with this book, I could not put it down. The audiobook is fantastic. I also just love babies, though I loved, loved Drake in this one. And I also just adored how Knox was there to like welcome Memphis and her son in with open arms. Like at the end of the book, like he can confidently say like, Drake is my son. Drake is my son. Like, oh, I swoon over him, okay. Trick warning this one for kidnapping. Just wanted to make y'all aware of that. One of the buddy reads that I had this year was the Landon Shea duet by Brittany Cherry with Rachel over at Rachel Reason Sings. And I ended up giving part one this duet five stars. This duet is a takes place in two different timelines. So book one happens when Landon and Shay are in high school together, and then it jumps in book two to a second chance romance when they are 
like adult adults. Lynn and Shay go to the same high school. They do not get along like whatsoever. They have like the same like friend group, but everyone knows that they are notoriously known for not liking each other. Um, but Shay ends up like overhearing a bet that Landon makes with some guy at a party saying like, oh, I bet I can make Shay fall in love with me by the end of the school year or something like that. And Shay's like, I'll take you up on that bet. I'll make you fall in love with me. And so through them trying to force the other person to fall in love with them, they end up falling in love with the other person as well. Then book two in the duet is a second chance romance between the two of them. But I definitely loved book one more than book two, even though this one does take place in high school. Like I did not care. Did not care whatsoever. I felt like Landon and Shay were just completely destined to be with one another. They're like one of those soulmate couples to me. One of the reasons why I love this one more than the second book in the series, just by half a star y'all, just by half a star, um, is because you get to fully see Landon and Shay fall in love with each other on page on here. Like they really do not like each other at first. And seeing the slow progression of them falling in love with each other was absolutely spoon worthy. Trigger warnings in this one for discussions of suicide death of a loved one, discussion of past self-harm, depression, and drug use. Chloe Lee's came out with a new book this year and you bet your bottom dollar, I gave that book five stars. This is If Only You by Chloe Lee's. I have a whole entire live show of Brie and I discussing this book for the Chronically Courageous Book Club. We'll link it down below for you. Excuse the barking dog. Um, but this one is about Ziggy and Sebastian and it is a sports romance where both characters are involved in a sport, in a professional sport. So Ziggy in here is a soccer player and Sebastian is a hockey player on the same team as Ren from the second book in the Bergman Brothers series. The two of them have this fake friendship relationship to get like a better public eye, I guess. And so Ziggy's family stops like viewing her as like the baby of the family. She is in her early twenties, like she's not a kid anymore and she wants her family to see her like that. I go more into my thoughts in the live show. It'll be linked down below, obviously. Um, but Brie and I both gave this book five stars. We both loved it. I really enjoyed the celiac disease representation as a celiac myself. Um, Sebastian here is being diagnosed with celiac disease throughout this book. And then Ziggy is also autistic. So there's that representation, which is own voices. This was really unique because I've never really seen like a fake friendship romance. They were definitely not expecting them to fall in love with each other. Like they, it wasn't a fake relationship either, like a fake romantic relationship. Like it was fake friendship. Like they were just expecting to be fake friends then they ended up becoming real friends, then lovers. Like mm, I thought it was beautiful. For trigger warnings in this one, um, they are in the front on the author's note page, um, but I'll just read them aloud. It says past experience with verbally abusive step parent, abandonment of a parent and self-medicating with alcohol slash substances. I am in awe of Emma Scott and the Butterfly Project did not disappoint me like at all. And I was honestly surprised though at the end of this book that I ended up giving it five stars because it, I feel like it is so different from every other Emma Scott book that I've ever read. Um, because I think every single one of Emma Scott's books that I've read just literally rips your heart out of your chest and slowly puts it back together. This one is way more subtle. There's definitely emotional aspects in here, but it's not as heart-wrenching as her other books. Beckett and Zelda both live in New York City. Zelda is wanting to get her graphic novel up and running that she's been writing and Beckett's just trying to make ends meet, honestly, and make rent for this month. When they meet each other one day, she's like, this is kind of kismet because I need somewhere to stay for like a cheaper price and you need more money for rent. So how about like I move in with you for a few months while I get my graphic novel up and running and then I will pay you like whatever else you need in rent. So the two of them move into this very tiny studio apartment in New York City. They end up sharing a bed at one point for many nights and even Beckett ends up working on this graphic novel with Zelda at one point as well. So these two strangers end up moving in with each other in this like very shoebox size apartment and things just ensue. I'm obsessed with forced proximity romances. And I feel like this is one of the best ones I've ever read. This is definitely a character driven romance. So just be aware of that before going in. You definitely focus more on Beckett and Zelda as people and also as like a couple. They both have such complicated and realistic lives. Again, like Talia Hibbert's book that I was talking about, I was so surprised that these characters were not real people. This is just a fabulous romance. I cannot get enough of it. I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, for trigger warnings, you have substance addiction and relapse of a side character. Um, you have PTSD, panic attacks, remembrance of the kidnapping of a loved one, hospitals, and death. I do have a few novellas I need to mention because I am a novella reader and I do rate novellas differently than like full-length books. Um, like going into them, I'm not expecting a lot. So like 
The five star rating of these is for my own personal enjoyment, honestly. <laughs> so um, first one is Endless Possibility by Emma Scott, another Emma Scott book. This is actually a little novella that takes place after her book Rush, which was one of my favorite books of last year. And this takes place towards the end of the book and then also a chunk after the main book in the series in the hero's point of view, like figuring out and reading like what he did during the time period and what happened to them after the book. That's all I can say about it because I can't like spoil the main book in the series. So I'm going to leave it at that. But I also gave this book five stars and I'm going to have a physical copy of this book very soon when I meet Emma Scott at Book Bonanza. I am so excited. So excited to have this one. Cassie Mint is like the queen of novellas to me. I absolutely adore her. So A Baby for the Outcast was one that I read, I believe for the novella-a-thon, like the first novella-a-thon of this year. And I loved it. I think it was my favorite book that I read for the novella-a-thon. In this novella, our heroine ends up becoming the live-in assistant to a very reclusive man. He is an artist, I'm pretty sure. And so he needs help getting certain things around the house because he does have mobility issues. The hero constantly dreams about the heroine. And so one night when the heroine is scared from a storm and they end up having like a grand old time together, he just expects, like thinks that it's a dream and thinks nothing of, nothing of it when he wakes up. But as you can guess from the title, like, Things go in a way they did not expect. <laughs> she ends up getting pregnant from it. I was just obsessed with this book. I read it in a time I needed to. It's a great palate cleanser. I just rate novellas also differently than full length, full length books. Like I had a grand old time with this one. I didn't find any fault with it being a novella, honestly. For fantasy romance, I have King of Sword and Sky by C.O. Wilson. This is the third book in her Terran Soul series which is a fantasy romance series I am obsessed with. If you want a fantastic fantasy romance series, like there's like five books about the same couple and how they fall in love. They're fated mates. There's magic. There's like everything you could think of. Like I adore this series so much. And so this book is just like a, the third book in the installment about Eliseta and Rain. Rain is like the most powerful, oldest fey shifter ever. And um, he is very happy when he ends up finding his fated mate in Eliseta, who is a very simple, um, like human farm girl. And she's like, this doesn't compute. This does not make sense. Like fated mates are supposed to be equal in every aspect. How are you mated to me? Like, I don't really get it. And so you have to explore where Eliseta comes from and who she is and what powers she possibly possesses. And uh. That's all I can say about this series. That's literally book one. And so this is the third book in this series. You get a lot of page time with the villain in this series and I absolutely despise him. Like he is awful. I hate him. I can't wait to read the other books in the series where hopefully he dies. Because <laughs> like, I don't want him. I don't want to read about him anymore. The Temptation of a Highlander by Lisa Braden amazing historical romance that I've read this year. This one is about Campbell and Clarissa. Campbell has been pining after his brother's fiance's best friend Clarissa here for quite a long time, but he doesn't think that he would ever deserve a woman like Clarissa. But little does he know that this babbling woman is totally obsessed with him as well. Clarissa is then threatened by a previous suitor of hers, and the only way to save her is for Campbell to bring her back to his estate and I believe pretend that they are engaged. And throughout this, her living in a small cabin with Campbell, uh, the feelings between the two of them are finally like released. <laughs> this is my favorite book in this series so far. Elisa Brayden uh, writes amazing historical romances. This is her Highlander romance series. And the way this man worshiped his woman, like swoon, make me melt into a puddle. There is trigger warnings in here, just by the way, for stalking and animal death. I will say though, my favorite historical romance of the year so far, which also might be like my second favorite book of the year so far. I don't know, it's top three for sure, is Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott. Like. This book has so many tropes that I just love. It has the captor captive trope, enemies to lovers, uh, sharing one bed, forced to marriage, so like blackmail you marriage. This is like an epitome of an enemies to lovers romance and Scarlett Scott did it so freaking well. So Lady Calliope in here is actually a secret writer for this like essay, essay series of essays that come out kind of like Lady Whistledown. Um, where it's called like the sins of Lord Sin or something. I don't know. 
Um, but basically, it's a collection of essays about all of the horrible things and sinful things that Lord Sin has done. Lord Sin is an actual lord. He's an actual person. And um, no one knows that Calliope has been writing these letters, but it's totally tarnishing his reputation. Like, he cannot get remarried. And he's pissed. He's so mad. He's like, what did I do to this woman? Turns out she's been writing these um, essays for revenge because she believes that Lord Sin ended up killing her brother. So Lord Sin, at the beginning of this book, decides enough is enough and he's gonna kidnap Lady Calliope and force her to marry him because no one else will. He's like, you ruined my reputation, so you must basically pay the piper. You, you gotta marry me then. I loved everything about this book. It was so good. It's actually free to listen to if you have Audible. It's on um, Audible Plus, so be sure to pick it up if you haven't yet. It was so good. I could not put it down. I think I read this after watching the Queen Charlotte show and it gave me, oh, it gave me everything that I needed. I was wanting, I was needing after watching that show. Like I wanted the enemies to lovers, the pining, even like the like lady whistle down aspect was like, so good to me. I finally read Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin, y'all. I did it. <laughs> I really, really, really enjoyed this one. I can't really talk about it all that much because so many people say it, what they say is true. Like if you talk about this book too much, like it'll spoil so much. This is about Bennett, our heroine in here, Bennett Sharp. And she's the daughter to a very well-known dangerous pirate. And she's also on the run from like pirate hunters because piracy is illegal. Um, but she only really fears one man and that is her husband, Priest. He is on the hunt for her for something that she did to him. And um, she's the only, he's the only one she's really scared of. But then things take a turn in Bennett's like plans and Priest's plans when she ends up getting kidnapped by a like naval officer named Ashley uh, Cutler, Ashley Cutler. And it gets even more complicated when she ends up realizing she's in love with both of these men. Like, what is she gonna do? I read this book in one day. This giant chunky monkey, like 16 hour audiobook, all in one day. It was so addictive, but it is one of the darkest books that I've read for sure. I loved like the sea setting. I am a Pirates of the Caribbean girly. It fed my Pirates of the Caribbean soul, but this is definitely darker than Pirates of the Caribbean. I loved the writing, the amazing characters and the couple dynamics. But again, it gets very dark. So I'll tell you the trigger warnings because there, there's a few. Um, so SA on page, there's more than one scene. So just like if you read the one scene and you think, oh, okay, I'm done, that's it, there's more. So just like be aware of that. Um, grief over death of a loved one, kidnapping, torture, death, gore, slavery, dismemberment, and infertility. This book did not disappoint. There's a reason why so many people love this one. It's that good. I gotta talk about some alien romances. Okay, who would I be without talking about alien romance? So first is Broken by the Horde King by Zoe Draven. I believe this is my favorite book in the entire series. Like, it is so good. I buddy read this one with Victoria. Both of us loved this one. We were obsessed with it. This takes place in the Horde Kings of Drakkar series. I think it's book four in this series. Basically, this book takes place on a planet called Dakar. Like, there's like the native people, which are the Dakari. And then you also have human settlements that have settled onto the um, planet. Anyway, our heroine here, Mava, is a human woman, but she was adopted into a Dakar family when she was quite young because she was found as like a baby in the woods and this family ended up adopting her. Um, so she lives in this Dakar village, being the only human. She is bullied a lot as a kid and teased that because she's the only human. Her only friend was Kyrian, who was kind of the prince of the village of sorts and they are just each other's solace in every way possible. When they are a little bit older and of age, Maeva finally confesses the feelings that she's had for Kyrian basically her whole entire life, and he rejects her in front of the entire village, and she is devastated. Then it jumps to when they are all grown up and they have not seen each other in years. She was very betrayed by Kyrian in that certain aspect, but there's something else that he did that she ultimately like cannot forgive. He then comes back to the village to make Maeva his, like he thinks that they are destined to be with each other. But she's not so forgiving. It's been 10 years since they've seen each other. She is not that forgiving. So this book is filled with groveling, which is like my favorite thing ever. <laughs> I think this is like my favorite alien romance book of the year so far. Like it is just everything I've ever wanted. Like it, it's so good. I cannot say that enough. A uh, trigger warning here for grief around familial death. Um, I believe her mother dies and so there's a lot of grief surrounding that. I have to also talk about Frantor by Honey Phillips. This is book number six in the Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series. If you want low angst, 
short alien romance novellas, you can definitely pick this series up. This is a kidnapping romance. Um, basically, well, Frantor lives on this ice planet ranch with his brother in arms and one of his brothers ends up kidnapping a human woman for him leaving her at his doorstep during a snowstorm and Frantor is the recluse out of the bunch because he was heavily scarred and injured in this alien battle. He is very shy and very closed off and doesn't want to scare anyone like he would be so devastated if the woman left on his doorstep was scared of him so he hides in the shadows and makes sure that the heroine never sees his face. Um, but they fall in love with each other without like seeing the other person and those are some of my favorite romance books of all time like I love that part of the book and that's all I want to leave you with with that one because anything I could say is a spoiler it's novella length but this is definitely my favorite in this series and the only book I've given five stars to in that entire series. Oh there is also I want to say chronic pain representation the hero because he's so heavily scarred and injured from battle um, he deals with a lot of chronic pain and the heroine helps him with that so I love that aspect of the book. A sci-fi romance is Fall by Claire Kent. This is a caveman-esque romance. The heroine in here um, is kind of like in the outs with her um, government and so they end up dumping her on this prehistoric planet where there are basically like cavemen aliens of sorts. They look human um, but they don't really have like a speaking language. They talk in grunts and they have this hierarchy when it comes to the cave people and the heroine just doesn't really know what to do at first when she's there, obviously. Um, but then she becomes really close to one of the guys in the um, caveman group. And uh, they end up falling in love with each other, even through the language barrier and the cultural differences between the two of them. Like he will literally kill for this woman. And I was obsessed with him. Again, another short one I can't really talk about all that much because it is novella length. But there's a reason why everyone loves this book so much who's read it. Archel's Resonance by Ruby Dixon definitely got five stars for me. This is the first book in her new series, which is the Ice Planet Clone series. It's a spinoff to the IPV Ice Home World. It takes place in the same world. But I can't really talk about the summary of this because, like, it spoils what happens at the end of the Ice Home series. And I really don't want to spoil anybody for that. Um, so if you want to know my thoughts about this book, I actually have a reading vlog just for this one. Um, I'll link it down below talking about only Argel's residence. Basically, Argel in here, we've read about him in the Ice Home series and this is about him finally finding his mate who may or may not be a clone. So I'll leave it at that. You can go check out that vlog if you want to know more of my thoughts. And the last book that I have to mention is another novella and it is a monster romance. I think it's the only monster romance on this list, but I was obsessed with it. I read it for the second round of the novella a thon. This is Wed to the Ice Giant by Layla Fay. Like, oh, I really, really, really loved this one. A heroine here gets genetically matched to her like perfect mate, who is our hero, who is a ice giant. He's huge. He's a giant. There is size difference galore. Like it is, whew, it's very good. I was just obsessed with it. Again, I rate novellas differently. Like I, I think of them, read them differently than full length novels. So I did not find any fault in this little short novella. Like I had a grand old time reading it. I gave it five stars. If you want to read a fantastic size difference monster romance, like look no further. It was so good. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all 20 books that I've given five stars to so far in 2023. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And what are some of the books you've given five stars to so far this year? I would love to know. Maybe I'll read them. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the um, star emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.